Hi, good morning everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, for this Facebook Live. Um, my name is Kayla Powell. I'm the Rapid Response Communications Manager here at the National Center for Transgender Equality. I'm joined by Arlie Christian, who is our Passport and ID Document Expert and State Policy Director, and our Executive Director, Mara Kiesling. Um, before we get started, we know that there's been a lot of discussion and, and some confusion about what's going on with the State Department's website and the Passport Gender Marker Change document. And uh, Mara, uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, get started? I think you had a few words. Yeah, you absolutely. To say. Thank you so much, Kayla. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad to be here with you guys. Thank you. Uh, so we, we have been all as as trans people and people who love trans people are very concerned um, honestly since Donald Trump won the election in 2016 um, we've been concerned about lots of policies about the overall well-being of trans people and, and in particular about the passport policy there have been a lot of um, times when people thought the passport policy was at risk and and this week there was some uh, some movement on it that we want to talk about. We want to, we've, we've gotten into it, we've worked with the State Department, we think we understand what's going on really pretty well, and we want to have a chance to talk with folks about it. Um, you know, we're, we are super concerned about the passport policy, even though, as I, Arlie's going to explain, it, it hasn't changed really. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we're, we're concerned and, you know, it was, NCT has been working on this since 2007. I, the first passport meeting I think we had was in 2007 during the Bush administration and we worked and we worked and in 2010 we won this really great policy. We've had a couple of enhancements made since then uh, during the last administration, not during this administration. Um, <coughs> but what I think we all know um, is that as long as there is a Trump-Pence administration, all of our good policies are at risk. Um, that, is, that is absolutely true. Um, and what we're gonna do today is talk about what is the status of this policy, a little bit about what we think the risk is to it, but, but, but really we wanna emphasize that it is still absolutely true that trans people have an absolute right to travel, have an absolute right to travel with good identification documentation. We're gonna keep working on that. Um, I'm, I'm so proud to be at NCT working with folks like Kayla and Arlie, and, and Arlie does a lot of our, uh, most of our ID documents work. Um, um, both Harper Jean Tobin and I, Harper Jean's our policy director, have worked a lot with the State Department also. This is a really important one that we're really, um, we're really, it's so important to us. And we have made it very clear over the last few days to the State Department that they screwed up and we need them to unscrew up. Um, they say they didn't mean to, to make any significant changes. They say that it was all to make the, the website uh, language uh, consistent. more consistent with the, the word sex that's on the passport itself or the passport application. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we told them what we thought, we told them what we need and, and we insisted on it. And we're gonna, we're gonna monitor that and keep working over the next couple of days to get more clarifications for them. Um, but the bad website that went up is now down. Um, mm -hmm. As of a little bit ago, it was still down. So mm -hmm. if you go to it now and it's up, it's because it just went back up. Um, they are fixing it. They understand that some of the language they used was really bad, and Arlie's gonna talk uh, about that. Um, um, but it's, it, it is really important, I think, for folks to know how this really is. Um, this is a, a, such an important policy that, that, that really matters for us. And um, I know there are parents who are scared. So, so let's talk about that. Um, you know, they were careless and thoughtless uh, at the State Department. If they weren't trying to change anything, they, they really bungled it. Um, and we're gonna hold them accountable and we're gonna keep working with them. Um, but again, yeah, the, the truth is all of our policies are at risk as long as there's a Trump-Pence administration. Um, and I, I, my, one of my little mottos here um, that, that I think is so important for us to be able to do this work in Washington right now is that tough times do not last, but tough people, tough thinking, tough advocacy, that lasts. Um, 
whenever the Trump administration does anything bad, we try to stop it. When we can't stop it, we try to slow it down. When we can't slow it down, we try to mitigate the damage. We always try to make them pay politically because that'll help later. Mm -hmm. And then fifth, so importantly, we prepare to fix it later when they break something. Um, we're keeping track of every screw up they make, every time they hurt us, and we will get it fixed. We know how to do it now. I'm going to leave you with uh, Kayla and Arlie, and Arlie's really our ID documents expert. Um, uh, they'll be able to uh, help you a lot more with the specifics. Um, and, and just know that NCT is all over this. Um, it is something we're deeply concerned about. It is something we've been working on for more than 10 years, and we're gonna keep working on it. And the policy is not yet broken. If it breaks, we will then fix it. Right. Um, and I don't mean to be at all cavalier about that, but we need to be, we need to be tough with the State Department, and we are being tough, and we need to be um, just aware of how it really is. So I'm going to leave it with you guys so you can have a, more of an expert conversation. Um, Kayla, thank you. Arlie, thank you. And, thank and you, everybody there, thank you, and just know we're here working for you. Thank you very much, Thanks Mara. So, so this is going to work a little bit differently from a lot of our other Facebook Lives as Arlie and I scoot over a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, so we want, we're going to do a couple of things. Um, we are going to, number one, take your questions because we know folks have a lot of questions about what's been going on. And, and that's, that's good. We, we want to be here to answer them. Um, and then secondly, we want to give you some information and address some things that you know, may, may are, are not clearly explained in the existing policy that lead to a lot of these um, uh, misunderstandings. And so we, we want to make sure that, you know, by the end of this, folks get their questions answered and have a good understanding of what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, to reintroduce ourselves a little bit, my name is Kayla Powell. I am the Rapid Response Communications Manager here at NCTE. I'm the woman behind the curtain of a lot of our digital and social media activities. And I am Arlie Christian, and I work primarily on our ID document policies here at NCTE. So um, I work a lot on the, on the passport policy, mm -hmm. including kind of monitoring what has happened um, with it over the years and assisting anyone who's having trouble getting their gender marker updated on their US passport. It's really, really important work, and you know more about this than just about anybody that I've talked to in, in years and years of being, you know, doing this kind of work. Um, so why don't we get started? Let's talk a little bit about the letter that went out yesterday, uh, which if you haven't taken a look at this, we know Facebook Live isn't going to be a great avenue for, for you to watch all the way through. We're going to be on the air here for quite a while. Mm -hmm. I've got my coffee, Arlie's got, <laughs> Arlie's got water, and ready. We're, we're ready. <laughs> um, but if you don't have time to sit with us and, 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 and listen to us talk about this and answer questions, I highly recommend that you take a look mm -hmm. at the letter that we posted on our social media channels yesterday. Is very widely shared and it kind of breaks down what happened. Arlie, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, let's go over a little bit of what happened since I think Mara alluded to some of the events that have gone on in the past 48 hours. Oh, um, right. But essentially, to summarize what has gone on with the State Department gender change policy for the U.S. passport, um, some uh, community folks rec uh, realized about two days ago that there had been changes to the Department of State, State web page that explains the gender change policy. So keep in mind, um, throughout this um, explanation, we're talking about two different um, documents. So one right. is the actual Department of State gender change policy. That's in something called the Foreign Affairs Manual, which is the manual that describes to State Department employees all of the procedures for updating, for, for issuing passports. So that's the actual policy, gender change policy. That has not changed besides for the uh, number, the number of the, the section of the gender change policy. This, the website is what they did make changes to. So we all um, uh, realize that there have been changes to the website. Like Mara alluded to, they were um, very unfortunate language changes, some pretty right. offensive language in there. They changed a lot of the term gender to sex, which um, was a very um, kind of uninformed thing to do. Um, they changed some of the explanations of what the gender marker on a passport means, mm -hmm. etc. So, yeah, yeah, it it's, was really, really terrible, scared a lot of people, us included, um, mm -hmm. a terrible thing to see. 
So we all responded, community responded, NCT responded immediately. We had a lot of kind of public fear and outroar about this. The State Department responded to us. They did. Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. The State Department um, issued a public apology saying, we are so sorry, we did not intend to scare people. And these changes were made kind of in an uninformed way. And they um, actually took down the changes, most of the changes from the website and put them put back up the old language. Right. So that was really exciting. And, and uh, just a, a piece of clarification here, when we say took down the old page and then put up a new one, and now they've actually taken that down and put up a new page entirely, mm -hmm. you're gonna see a lot of broken web links over the next couple of weeks as people go in and update uh, their web pages, ours included. Um, because I kept ours up to date so far, so, so right now it's Arla's good. <laughs> on it, yeah. So you can still use our ID document center, but what you're going to see is you may click on a link or on a web search result, and it may go to a 404 not found page, because instead of just updating the same page with new language, mm -hmm. they took down the page that was up and then put up the page with with this really awful language mm -hmm. and, and the the removed resources and some things like that. And then after the, the outcry from NCTE and from community groups, they took that one down as well and put up a third page, mm -hmm. which is the one that we are linking to on our ID document center and on our mm -hmm. website. So just a point of clarification yeah. for everybody out there. Very confusing, a lot of things right. happening over the past 48 hours. And so just to kind of catch folks up to where we are now. So um, we were able to have a conversation with the State Department yesterday um, and we talked through all of the things that have happened um, and um, asked them some very pointed questions. So we definitely expressed our um, grave concern and the community's concern about the changes that were made to the webpage um, and um, the State Department reiterated that they um, apologized, that they did not intend for their language changes to be mm -hmm. offensive. They have changed a lot of the language back to how it was. Um, and they reiterated that the gender change policy has not changed. Right. So they did assure us the same policy is in the Foreign Affairs Manual and the same letter that you need from a physician to update the gender marker on your passport is the same letter from before is still valid now. Um, we also um, asked the State Department to assure us that changes will not be made to this policy in the future. And we are waiting for them to give us that assurance and we will remain um, committed to continuing to talk to them and continuing to make sure that they are able to give us that um, assurance. Um, so that's where the policy stands right now. Um, the Again, the Foreign Affairs Manual is the same. The gender change policy is the same as it was before. There's a few tweaked language on the website, but for the most part, it is the same. So we're happy to kind of get into any of the details and the nitty gritty of that policy. Right. So um, we were talking about this Facebook Live working a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to be taking a look at the comments here. Um, and this might be a good point in time for us to, um, you know, we've, we've talked about the letter, we've kind of brought everybody up to date. Mm -hmm. So let's take a couple questions. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. So thanks for the live update. You're very welcome. We're happy to do it. Uh, Dean Rose asks, if your passport is already changed, do I have to do it again when I need to get it renewed? I think they may be talking about the position letter. Yeah, Dean, so that's a really good question. So there's there's been confusion about this in right. the past um, with, you know, with the same gender change policy we've always had. Mm -hmm. um, and so once you get a gender marker change, so let me back up for one second. So the passport gender change policy actually has two options for physicians letters and this is very tricky and detailed and a lot of people I think don't, don't uh, haven't quite understood this part. So the, past, the Department of State gives us two options. They have one letter that says, um, uh, if you send in a letter that says you've had appropriate clinical treatment for gender transition, you get a fully updated 10-year passport with your correct gender marker, mm -hmm. okay? There's another letter right. that you can, you can submit to the Department of State that says, from your physician, that says you're in the process of gender transition. It's a tiny little language change. And if you submit that letter, then you get a two-year temporary passport. So, if you did the 10-year letter saying you've had appropriate clinical treatment for gender transition, you never have to submit that letter again. Your gender marker has changed forever. If you submit the letter that says you are in the process of transition, then after two years you have to submit another letter 
that says you've had appropriate clinical treatment. So I'm gonna just comment a little bit on this. Um, this is a part of the gender change policy that we have always had issue with. Um, NCTE has tried to explain to the Department of State over and over again right. that this is a silly uh, difference, that you know, yeah. life is a process of, right. of gender transition and there's no medical difference between in the process of gender transition and has had appropriate clinical treatment. The Department of State has not listened to us. So there are those two different letters. NCTE encourages everyone to get their doctors to sign letters that say you've had appropriate clinical treatment because that means the, whatever treatment is appropriate for you, right. that's what your physician is working on. You don't have to tell them what it is. We encourage everyone to use that letter, get your 10-year passport, and never have to submit again. But if you did submit one that says in process, you're only going to get the two-year passport and you will have to submit another letter. Right. So that's very important to know, and, and you're right, it's just such a small change in language and it has such a big change in the type of passport that you get. Mm -hmm. And um, to be clear, you know, we have, we have always been saying, um, if you're in a position where you are able to go and get your passport, you should go and get your passport. You should exercise mm -hmm. your right to have documents that, that reflect your gender identity mm -hmm. and that are, are appropriate for, for you and, and where you are. Um, so thank you, Arlie, for answering mm -hmm. that, and thank you for your Thanks question. For uh, Dylan Wagsback um, asked, I know that automated captioning can be pretty awful. Does Facebook let folks upload captions after a live video is archived? So one of our colleagues already replied to uh, this comment or another one, basically explaining, um, we will have a Twitter chat later on this afternoon, starting at 4 p.m., mm -hmm. 4 p.m. to 5.30, it's gonna be the same two folks. It's gonna mm -hmm. be Arlie and I, we'll just be sitting behind a keyboard. So if that's an easier way for you to communicate, um, by all means do that. Just uh, send us a tweet with the hashtag NCTE Passports mm -hmm. and we'll see it and we'll answer it. Um, as far as captions on our Facebook Lives and our videos that we do, um, I handle a lot of this. We generally strive to get captions placed you know, as soon as is practicable after the video is archived. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the way Facebook works, we're not able to put in captions uh, while it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very sorry. We would love to if we could. Thanks um, for the question, Dylan. And, and Dylan's from Louisiana Trans Advocates, and so we're, we're really glad you're um, on the live with us today. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see. NCT will be doing a Twitter chat. Uh, Sophie Lynn asked, do you know why they did all this? Mm. That's a really great question. Yeah, Sophie, that is a great question. And you know, that is the same question we asked the Department of State folks on the phone yesterday. Um, so the answer that we have gotten from the Department of State is that they are trying to bring consistency to their language across the board. So what this means for Department of State folks is um, that passports have a sex marker on it, right? It says sex and then there is a M or F underneath there. And so, because it's a sex marker, they want to bring consistency and use the word sex throughout their policy. Now, we explained um, that um, it, while legally speaking, you know, sex and gender through legal um, work, through court cases, etc., have really been legally synonymous. Um, however, we did explain that this is a change that will not one, will not go over well with the trans community. Two, will make it harder for people to get access to letters um, to update their gender marker. That it's very important that they keep the same language that we have always had in our password policy, that we spent years and years updating our, uh, our uh, educating our providers, our physicians, our, our doctors across the country. Okay about this language. Yeah, so it's really important to know that, you know, a couple things here. Mm -hmm. We, they, they haven't changed the requirements. They don't require any proof of specific medical treatments. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are still asking for answers from the State Department. You know, they say that this is why they changed it. We are actively engaging with the State Department. Arlie is actively engaging with the State Department. Our policy director, Harper Jean, is actively engaging with the State Department to try and get as many answers to this um, as we can for community members. Mm -hmm. So I think kind of the, the, the long and short of it is, you know, we know what they've said, um, but we, we will continue pressing the State Department for, for, for more answers, you know, as we said in our letter yesterday. Mm -hmm. 
And I, you know, we do want to make it clear to people this, and the State Department has made it clear, they do not intend to change to uh, what the policy was before 2010. They do not intend to have specific medical uh, treatment. This is what we understand from the State, Depo State Department. Um, so we do want to make that clear to folks. Um, that is not the intention. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, again, that, that their apology included the fact that you know, there there is probably some misunderstanding um, uh, within the department about um, what a change like that would, would mean. So we do still have the same policy in the Foreign Affairs Manual, and that is what we're following right now. Right. So let's take another question here. Um, let's see here. Why is the policy not on the website if this is not the policy? So um, that I think that's speaking to a point that we've tried to make a couple times where we're saying that what you see on the State Department's website, where you go to state.gov, I think is mm -hmm. the, the, the link, and you, you find it, and you look at it. So the folks that are behind the scenes at the State Department that are actually processing the passport applications, who are, are doing all of this work, um, they're not going based off of the, the website. The website is something that's supposed to be public facing, mm -hmm. that folks, you know, like us and, and folks that don't work at the State Department and have this huge knowledge of what's going on there and their, their policies to, to understand. Um, they use something different, it's called the Foreign Affairs Manual. Um, so they, they're, in this particular case, they, they changed the website um, and then there were very minor numbering changes made to the Foreign Affairs Manual, mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the website is something entirely different and that's what saw the substantive changes. Um, so just to be very clear on mm -hmm. that piece, is that, is that about yeah, right? Yeah, and, and that the majority of changes that were made to the website have been rolled back to what they were before. So mm -hmm. um, we had a period of time when the, those changes were up there and now it is mostly back to what it was before. Right. Mm -hmm. So another question that we have is from Sophie Lynn uh, again, I've had my passport for a couple of years, where does that leave me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because I know folks are, are concerned about if you've gotten a gender change policy in the past, a gender change on your passport in the past, does it still stand? And the, and the answer is absolutely yes, as long as you've gotten, again, that 10-year uh, permanent uh, gender marker change using the language that you've had appropriate clinical treatment for gender transition. There is no, um, you know, nothing uh, will, nothing, that, that is permanent. That's a permanent change. So when you go and renew your passport in 10 years, that gender marker will stay on your passport. Mm -hmm. So, um, and another thing to keep in mind is that name changes are separate from gender marker changes. And we're going to talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that. Um, uh, actually, I think this might be a good place to just mm -hmm. go ahead and break down um, the, the difference between getting a name change yeah. done on your passport and getting a gender marker change done. So yeah. Arlie, why don't we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Kayla, that's that's an important point that I think is very confusing for folks. Um, so there are, um, generally speaking, when you're going to update your, your documents and your records, um, there, you're often getting a legal name change from the courts. There's a couple exceptions to that. For the most part, you have to get a legal name change in front of a judge and say, I want to change my name from this to this, and you get that name change order. And you use that name change order to change your legal name on all of your documents and records, right? That name change order is your golden ticket for a name change, including mm -hmm. your passport. That is the document you use to change your name on your passport. Right. Gender marker changes are more complicated. Gender mm -hmm. marker changes, you have to follow the policy of the document or record you're trying to update. Okay, so some uh, documents, uh, for example, some birth certificates from certain states, you're going to need a court order declaring or recognizing your gender for some birth certificates um, and some other uh, gender markers. For other documents, you're gonna need a form from let's say your driver's license agency. You sign the form and your provider signs the form. For some documents, like a passport, you need a letter. You need a letter from your physician saying you've had this appropriate clinical treatment. So it's different for everyone. Right. So for passports <laughs> specifically, you need this standard letter um, that says from your physician that says you've had appropriate clinical treatment for gender transition. And that letter is the magic letter that will update the gender marker on your passport. Yep. And it is really important to know that we have resources available to help you with this. Mm -hmm. um, a number of folks have reached out to us on Facebook and on Twitter and, and via email over the last few days saying, 
you know, th this has me worried. I want to go through this process. I want to get my passport. I want to get my gender marker changed mm -hmm. and what have you. Um, we keep our ID document center up to date. We've already updated it with the new link mm -hmm. to the State Department website. If if there you know were to be any changes, even down to numbering of things, it would be reflected in our ID document center. So what you want to do for that is go to transequality.org slash documents mm -hmm. and then it, it'll ask you okay if this is a state id what mm -hmm. state do you live in and you select it and we also have u.s territories as well mm -hmm. uh, and if it's a federal document what federal document and it, it walks you through it's a very very useful tool i used it when i went through that process mm -hmm. for myself um, and it, it we highly recommend that if, if you don't know where to start or if you have questions, take a look at that resource as well. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have a, a very specific situation that you have a question about, um, about your particular personal experience, mm -hmm. and it's not something that you want to share on social media, mm -hmm. Um, what what should they do if, if that's the case, Arlie? Yeah, you should feel free to get in touch with me. Um, I get questions all the time from folks who are confused about the process or where to start or what it, uh, what applies to, to your particular situation. Mm -hmm. So feel free to get in touch with me. Um, my email is achristian at transequality.org and I'm really happy to answer any questions. Additionally, if you find any problems on the ID Document Center, if something's confusing right. that you don't understand, I would say I up it on a daily basis there's a lot of states and territories yes. out there a lot of different policies we're talking about and I'm constantly striving to get the best and most accurate information for everyone out there so please Absolutely. do let me know if you find any problems and thank you for all your hard work on that the we have a, a whole team of policy folks here but Arlie really takes the lead on uh, on identity pol uh, ID document policies and state policies and uh, this is you put a lot of work into this so thank Absolutely. you for, for me and for everybody else out there I really enjoy it thank uh, you Skylar Heron asks I have had my state ID and social security social security card excuse me all changed from male to female am I able to get a passport with my female gender marker on it mm -hmm. um, I think we talked about that a couple times uh, you would just go to uh, the ID documents website will walk you through what you need, but the long and short of it is that you need that physician's letter that we were talking about. Right. Yeah, and Skylar, it's a, it's, a, it's a confusing question for most people, for a lot of people. So if you've changed your other documents, let's say you've updated the gender on your birth certificate, you've updated the gender marker on your ID, updated all these things, do you still need to get a physician's letter to update your, your passport? And the answer is yes, unfortunately. Um, the passport agency, the Department of State, only accepts that physician's letter. Mm -hmm. And even if you've updated all your other documents, right. even if you have a court order recognizing your gender, they don't care. They just right. want that physician's letter that says you've had appropriate clinical treatment. So I think that confuses a lot of folks. So keep that in mind um, for everyone. So we'll move on to the next question, which I think we may need a little bit more information on. Um, in community, we are hearing that everyone submitting for gender marker changes on passports are receiving letters from the State Department that use language which sounds worrisome. I am not familiar with what that letter is. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar offhand? Yeah, so Lee, that's a great question. Um, so we, you know, I've been monitoring what what folks are experiencing as they go about getting their gender markers updated for you know eight years under Obama administration and um, uh, in in this administration as well. There's always been issues um, with this policy. There's often a lot of um, so passport applications are submitted at these passport acceptance facilities across the country, right. and they tend to be at the post office, right. at other uh, federal buildings, mm -hmm. and I will tell you, very often the agents who are accepting your um, passport um, applications are not fully versed and are not fully trained not only on the gender change policy, but on a whole bunch of other policies. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something the Department of State has recognized. They know there's a lack of training um, on these issues. Um, so very often people will get misinformation when they're um, handing in their passport uh, application. And then when it gets sent um, into the main passport facility to be processed, there's often mistakes there as well. So we have seen many people get letters from the Department of State saying, your application is not complete. Um, we need a gender change letter. We need a name change order. We need kind of a new photo. I mean, a host of problems that people have had. Um, sometimes 
the, it, it is because there was a tiny um, error in the letter. You have to follow the exact language of the model letter that we give you on our website. Um, right. So follow our model language exactly on physician's letterhead, signed in blue ink by the physician, etc. They're very blue particular. ink, really blue ink, so that they blue. know it's an original. Ah, yeah, okay. Um, it's very tricky, um, but. Um, Sometimes the Department of State will send that letter requesting additional information even when you've done everything right. right. And that's the most frustrating. And often yeah. we'll tell folks, make copies of everything that you submitted. If you can get two originals of your letter or three originals, please do so you can have the originals so that if you need to send another one, you can. Um, they may ask for the same information again. And if you're having trouble and you think you've, you've uh, submitted everything and um, you're still getting that request for additional evidence, do get in touch with me, and I'll help right. you. I'll help you through it. Um, there can be some complicated um, cases out there. So. That's that's exactly right, and I think that's the the takeaway from this. Um, if you got a letter, you don't understand what's going on. You've submitted all your information. The way that our ID document center says to submit it, give Arlie an email. Again, mm -hmm. Arlie's email is a Christian at transequality.org, and you're pretty good about getting in touch with people pretty yeah, quickly. Um, so. You know that's that's really important to remember it can absolutely be frustrating and it's important to to note here as well as Mara had said earlier that you know this this policy that's in existence that we've been talking about you know there are there are hurdles that people have to jump over mm -hmm. and it can be difficult sometimes to to make this happen and it has been that way yeah. um, this is this is the way that it's been through the Obama administration and mm -hmm. into the Trump administration so um, you know, we want to help you. Mm -hmm. um, please reach out to Arlie. Uh, first of all, refer to our ID document center if you haven't previously. That is a, an incredibly valuable resource. And then give Arlie an email if um, if that is not helping you. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a moment and talk more about. We've been talking a little bit about the ID document center. Mm -hmm. Um, folks have had some kind of general questions about these kind of things. So do you want to talk about the ID Document Center and, and what you can do on it and mm -hmm. where it came from and, and what it is? Yeah. So, yeah, we put together the ID Document Center on the Trans Equality website to make sure that everyone across the country and in all of the territories has information about the name and gender change process in your state. So the reason the name and gender change process is so confusing is because it's different for everyone and different for every place, right? Um, so depending on the state you live in and the state you were born in and probably a number of other factors, including what documents you're trying to update, you're going to have a different process. Um, right. So, right? So, you know, the, the main information you need to know is right for your legal name change process. You do need to do that in the state you're living in, the state mm -hmm. where you have residency and you're typically going to the court to get your legal name change. Um, and then for the, your gender marker change, for your driver's license or state ID, you're looking at the instructions in the state, again, that you live in or have re residence in, the state where you have your ID or um, license from. Um, if you're trying to update your um, uh, social security information, you're going to that federal record drop down um, to, to update your name and your gender marker with the Social Security Administration. If you have immigration documents, if you have a permanent resident card or a work permit or a naturalization certificate that need to be updated, you're going to our USCIS, our immigration documents um, page that has the um, instructions for updating your name with that name change order and your gender marker with a letter from a physician um, or from a number of providers actually. So um, use the uh, ID Document Center to look up information on the specific documents and records that you need to update in order to, to make sure your documents are all up to date. Awesome, and thank you so much for the work that you do on that. So we're gonna take a look at some of the other comments that we've gotten on some of our other posts here. Um, Lilia Weber asked us yesterday or said earlier this morning the State Department website uh, page title has changed to change of sex marker mm -hmm. um, that is something that did not revert is that right mm -hmm. okay that is one of the changes they made that that stayed there 
Okay. And again, the State Department says that they were just looking for that consistency with using, um, it's a sex marker technically right. on the passport. Yeah. But the underlying policy has stayed the same, right. that you're saying you had a um, appropriate clinical treatment for um, right. transition, gender transition. Yeah, and, and, and again here, the, the, the key thing is that the requirements are the same, not mm -hmm. even necessarily just the policy. Mm -hmm. Um, they might change a word here or there in the policy itself, but as long as the requirements that physician's letter are the, are, is the same, that's really the thing that allows folks to, to access the gender marker mm -hmm. update. So that's very important to remember. Exactly. Um, so that's also very important. Um, some other folks have, have asked, um, do I need some specific type of um, medical mm -hmm. treatment or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Arlie, do you want to... Yeah, no, it's, it's an important question. Um, so the language of the State Department policy is meant to be that, so that appropriate clinical treatment for transition means that any treatment between you and for your physician is sufficient. And the idea of the standardized letter is that you don't have to talk about what treatment you are getting. Um, that is between you and your doctor, right? So all the State Department wants to see is that the physician has signed off on you having appropriate treatment for you. So you can explain that to your physician. If they have questions, we have an explanation of what appropriate clinical treatment means on our website. Um, so if you need to refer your, your physician or your doctor to look at that um, in order to make them comfortable to sign this letter, please mm -hmm. do so. Um, but yeah, that's the idea that the State Department and anybody else does not need to know your private medical information right. that's between you and your doctor. Exactly, mm -hmm. that's, that's a key thing to know. Another question that we got that we'll answer real quick, mm -hmm. um, this was from earlier this morning, what if I legally have my name changed and gender marker changed? Is that court order good enough? Mm -hmm. um, that's a really good and really important question and the answer is, <laughs> We'll let you take this one. Yeah, for sure. Right. So um, for the Department of State to get the name changed on your passport, you need that legal court order for name change. So you will need to submit your court order for that. Mm -hmm. But even if you have a court order recognizing your gender, the Department of State is not going to recognize that to change your gender marker on your passport. So they still want to see the letter from the physician that says you had appropriate clinical treatment. Um, and they've, you know, they've explained their reason for that is that every judge has different requirements for what um, is needed to get a court order recognizing your gender. Similarly, when you update your IDs, every state has different requirements for what it takes to update the gender marker on your ID. And the Department of State wanted a standardized thing that everybody had to submit the same letter. So mm -hmm. that is why they require you to get a letter even after you've already gotten a court order. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Another question, has anyone gotten a replacement passport with the correct gender marker after transitioning? So if you already have a passport and it's still valid, like we've been saying before, what you need to do that, you know, is the, uh, is the letter from your physician mm -hmm. uh, confirming that you've had the appropriate clinical treatment. Exactly. Um, do we know if there's currently any page up at the State Department describing the gender marker change process? Mm -hmm. um, it was down, but it's back up. Yep, the page is back up um, as of, you know, as of this morning, as of last time I checked. Um, so that information should be there. Keep in mind, though, that page has, has um, you know, most of the information has been reverted, so it's the same, but please do use our page. We have a good explanation of everything, and please do use the model letter that we have up on our website, because that follows the Foreign Affairs Manual exactly. Right. Um, so use that model. Yep. And um, thanks to folks who have, uh, who have joined as we've gotten started here. Um, we've been going here for about half an hour now answering some of your questions uh, about uh, the, the State Department website and what's happened over the last 24 or 48 hours. Again, I'm Kayla Powell. This is Arlie Christian. Arlie is our uh, passport and ID documents expert. Um, so again, if you have questions, uh, we're going to be here with you for another few minutes at least. Make sure that you leave uh, a comment if you have a question that you'd like answered. Mm -hmm. Feel free to, to scroll back through the video. We've answered a number of questions already. Mm -hmm. um, I think that for the folks who, um, who have joined us, um, it might be useful for us to kind of um, kind of the halfway mark or, or past the halfway mark of our stream here talk again about what happened over mm -hmm. the last 24 hours or so and and 
you know, kind of where we stand. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do a, a little recap of what's been right. going on. Um, so yeah, Kayla and I are here talking about um, the State Department passport gender change policy. We have seen um, some really unfortunate um, scares on that policy over the last 48 hours. So we wanted to get online with you all to explain what's going on. Um, and essentially, um, the Department of State, without without warning, made some changes to their website page that explains the gender change policy. Um, and um, uh, community folks recognized those changes and let us know. We all put out a big outcry um, about, um, about that. Um, and um, made sure that right. that the State Department knew that that these changes, that the language they were using was offensive and uninformed, um, and the State Department responded, um, and they they apologized and right. they said we're very sorry that wasn't our intention, um, and they did go ahead and um, they said you know please know that nothing has changed in the official foreign affairs manual gender change policy that they had just changed language on the website um, and they changed most of it back. Um, and so now we're in the process of um, continuing discussions with the State Department, trying to get them to assure us that um, there won't be changes to this policy in the future mm -hmm. and letting folks know this policy is, is the same as it has been for the past um, almost 10 years now mm -hmm. um, and um, answering any questions you might have about getting your gender marker changed on your passport. Absolutely. And uh, our executive director, Mara Kiesling, was with us earlier. And, and I think some of the things that she said are very, very important to reiterate here. Um, first of all, we understand why there is confusion in the community, why there, a lot of folks are scared. I know in my personal capacity, I've gotten text messages from friends that, that saw this website change and didn't know what it meant. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to remember that, you know, we're here. We've been pulling a lot of late nights the last couple mm -hmm. of nights working on this. Uh, I know at least Arlie and I and a number of other folks here have. Um, we are actively engaging with the State Department. We have been pressing them for assurances that the policy isn't going to change. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't heard uh, one way or the other. We will keep you, community members, and, and the news media, and everybody else up to date. If anything was to happen, we would be the first ones to kind of let you know about that. Um, but it's important to remember that, you know, we've been getting the question a lot, what does this mean for the future? If they changed the website without talking to advocates, if they did all of these things and they 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 riled a bunch of folks up, what does this mean for the future? And the long and the short of it, and, and Mara said this earlier, is that as long as President Trump and Vice President Pence are mm -hmm. in the White House, a lot of policies are in danger across the, the State Department, housing and urban development, every, every single federal agency all of these policies are at risk. So we're not gonna sit here and say, oh, everything's hunky-dory, there's there's no problems, there won't be any problems. You know, we just we just can't say that um, because of, of who is there and, and what's going on. But, you know, we will be here, uh, we will be advocating on your behalf, on behalf of, of community members, on behalf of trans people to make sure that you know, we, uh, I think what she said was, you know, we will press to stop things that may happen. And if we can't stop them, we'll slow them down. Mm -hmm. And if we can't slow them down, we'll try and mitigate the damage. Mm -hmm. And, and kind of our promise is that we are going to stay in communication with you throughout this process. Um, if you hear something from a, a friend or someone on Facebook or a website somewhere, just, just feel free to reach out to us and, and we, we will, if, if something was to happen, we would be the first ones uh, on this. And we were the first ones on this when this, when this came up. Mm -hmm. um, so let's take uh, a couple more questions. Uh, Steph Nagoski says, could you please answer these questions also in messages? Some of us are at work or, and are unable mm -hmm. to follow the live stream. That's, that's really uh, a valuable feedback. If you wanna send us a message on Facebook, we're happy to answer it. Um, we totally understand folks can't stay with us for like 35 minutes mm -hmm. as we go through uh, a cup of coffee and mm -hmm. a glass of water and, and talk with y'all. Um, send us a message on on Facebook. Uh, Arlie and I are also going to be doing a Twitter chat this afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, four o'clock, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and 
you know, again, check our ID document center, and if you're having specific issues, you can reach out to Arlie yeah. at at a Christian at transequality.org. Happy to answer any questions. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that we have gone through the all of the questions that mm -hmm. are here. Arlie, did you have anything else that you wanted to say um, while we're here about the ID Document Center or about you know selective service or about any of these other topic areas that, that sure. might be pertinent? Well, you know, I will say um, um, for folks to, to remember um, that there, there's so much good work and good progress happening um, in the ID document world, and I think that's something important for us all to remember, too. I know folks have really celebrated over the past year as we've seen various states get rid of the requirement that um, doctors and, and social service providers sign off on our gender marker changes on licenses, for example, um, on state IDs. That's been an amazing, amazing step forward as states recognize right. we do not need doctors and providers um, to um, make this determination for us. We all know our gender right. and we know what's best to have in our IDs. Absolutely. So it's been great to see that moving forward. We've seen across the country an increase in access to gender neutral markers. Um, so um, X marker, an X marker typically on a driver's license and on some birth certificates now. Um, and and that's been incredible to see as well, to, rec to recognize that not, uh, not all folks identify as male or female, and there's an additional um, gender neutral option for people. Um, and um, you know, if you have questions about any of those policies, we're happy to answer them. We have information on our ID center. Um, but it's been really incredible to see ID document policies across the country modernize um, and move forward. Um, and so as we're you know as we're talking about the passport gender change policy, remember it's just it's one of many of the gender change policies across the country that we are continuing to work. NCTE works really hard to keep moving these policies forward, to modernize them, to get rid of barriers so that everybody can have access to accurate IDs. And thank you for all of that work. Mm -hmm. um, what we're gonna go ahead and do, we've been on the air now for just about an hour with you. Mm -hmm. um, we've answered uh, a lot of questions. I'm sure that you have more. There are a lot of ways that you can still reach out to us uh, as soon as we sign off. Again, Arlie and I will be on Twitter from 4 p.m. Eastern to 5.30 p.m. Eastern answering your questions. Uh, type them up, tweet them. We are at TransEquality on Twitter and use the hashtag NCTE Passports. That's how we'll find your question. We'll also have a thread up as soon as that gets started. Um, we can answer your questions there if you want to send them to us through Facebook Messenger. Uh, again, remember our ID document center is, is always uh, a, a resource for you and then you can reach out to Harley if there's problems. Mm -hmm. you know, again, we, we understand that the last 24, 48 hours have been scary for folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope that the information that we've been able to provide today uh, and we'll be providing throughout the day uh, in the Twitter chat and, and in the coming days can kind of um, let you know where we stand and what's going on, what NCT is doing. And, and again, the, the key takeaway here is that you know, we still want you to exercise your right to go and get your passport. Um, the requirements, you know, uh, the requirements are, are not different today than they were yesterday. Um, go to our ID document center, transequality.org slash documents, and that'll let you know how you can do that. Um, I, I want to thank you so much, and thank you, Arlie, for thank, taking the time. Thank you, Kayla. It's been, it's been wonderful to get to talk to you all today, um, and please do stay in touch with us about anything you're seeing. The more information we all have together, the better, um, and we, we want to be in touch with all of you. So Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you.